because of the <laughs> fact that once in a while uh, you, you get people's attention by saying something they may have never heard before. <laughs> And this is what we wrote, and this is what Dr. White wrote to us. In a time when the sanctity of life means so much to different people. Forty-three years ago and counting, abortion has become ordinary in Christian society. Those who call for an end to the killing are perceived as radicals who seek to overturn a normal part of our culture. The marginalization of the pro-life cause confronts us with an unprecedented challenge. Where do we go from here? Please join us right now. We introduce and welcome Dr. Larry White and my co-host, John Kane. Larry, welcome. Thank you, Dave. Probably further back than John and I would like to consider. <laughs> well, it's, it's even older than we are, and that's saying quite a bit. But the fact of the matter is, the unpleasant fact, is that 43 years will have shortly passed since Roe versus Wade changed the character of America. And of course a Supreme Court decision does not take place in a vacuum. That decision is indicative of the reality that values in America, the American perception of the nature of human life, had been changing for some time before that, or the decision would not have been made in the manner that it was. But 43 years is a long time. That means, of course, that anyone under the age of 43 has never lived in an America where it was not legal and increasingly socially acceptable to take the lives of innocent unborn children. We've become accustomed to the killing. It's been going on for so long, and we are bombarded from every direction, from the media, from our every variety of entertainment, from virtually all of our educational institutions, with an endless barrage of propaganda for the new religion of America call it secular humanism or naturalism or whatever, that sees no particular sanctity, no uniqueness in the value of human life, which was the bedrock conviction upon which this nation was founded, much Larry, less Christianity. Larry, what changed it so quickly? <laughs> well, what changed it was the subtle machinations of our adversary, who works cautiously, patiently, gradually, always appearing to be our friend, always professing to have nothing more than our best interests on his mind. That's what he told Eve. I want you to be free from that repressive God who won't let you eat of any of the fruit of any of the trees in this beautiful garden in which he has placed you. That's the way he worked then and that's the way he's working now. So what will it take to get people to realize that they're the proverbial frog in the kettle and the devil's been turning up the heat ever so slowly on us? What's it going to take to break through people's thick-skinned or, or desire not to pay attention. Well, I love that analogy, John, of the frog in the kettle as the water temperature gradually goes up, and that's precisely what has been happening. What's go what it's going to take, first of all, is a transformation of American Christianity. We've had it too good, too easy, for too long. We have assumed that to be American and to be Christian meant roughly the same thing because for the first 150 years or so of our history America operated on the basis of a generally biblical moral consensus. Our values and our perceptions of right and wrong were shaped Generally, we didn't want to get into the details that would start arguments, but generally based on Scripture. As Thomas Jefferson says in the Declaration of Independence, that every human being has been endowed by the Creator 
Today he wouldn't be allowed to say that, first of all, and mention one of the politically incorrect terms of the current culture. But the first and fundamental right of the worldview of the Founding Fathers, because of the fact that we have a divine creator, is the right to life. And that conviction has been gradually eroding over the decades.